Hello everyone, welcome to the final part of my remastered tutorial of creating a digital audio synthesizer. In this part, we'll be adding a waveform viewer, which will visualise the waveform that will be produced by the synthesizer based on the current parameters, which can help us predict what type of sound might be produced from the synthesizer based on what the waveform looks like. So to create this waveform visualiser, we're going to create a new control and place it at the right of all the oscillators in this big empty space that takes up half the synthesizer. Note how I have reduced the height of the synthesizer as a whole slightly to 345 because there was a little bit too much room here and it looked disproportionate to the amount of room on the x-axis here. So let's go ahead and create a new class called Wave Viewer, which for now will extend J panel and it will contain a private oscillator array called oscillators and it will have a constructor that will take an oscillator array and assign this array passed to the field array. This is so we can reference the oscillators in the synthesizer. We can set the border of this control to the utility border that all, most of the controls are using. So window design line border and we're going to override the paint component method which takes a graphics class as the parameter not graphics 2D just graphics and in here for now we're going to call the super paint component method past the graphics and we're going to cast the graphics to graphics 2D because the graphics 2D class is what we can use to draw two dimensional lines on the control itself which will be how we draw in our waveforms that we're visualising so the way this visualizer is going to work is that once we change a parameter on the synthesizer that will end up changing what sound is produced then we'll call the repaint method of this an instance of this wave viewer class that will use the graphics 2D class here to draw a series of lines that will end up looking like a complete cycle of a waveform but before we continue overriding this method let's head back to the synthesizer remastered class and create an instance of wave viewer so this will be a private final wave viewer called wave viewer and we'll set it to a new instance that takes in the oscillators declared above and now we'll go down to the constructor and set the bounds so we'll put wave viewer dot set bounds and we'll set the bounds to 290 0 310 and 310 it'll be a square and then we'll simply add the wave viewer to the main frame so once we start the program we will see this here we can see the border but now into the uh, paint component method we'll first want to draw two lines that will represent the x and y axis of a graph where in this case x is the time and y is the amplitude ranging from plus one to minus one so we'll do this using the graphics 2d dot draw line method and we're going to want to start at the left of the wave viewer so that's at zero we'll want this the line to run through the middle of the wave viewer so we'll create a new variable called mid y which will be get height divided by two since we'll be using this get height divided by two frequently so mid y we want it to go to the right so the the x-axis will be the width and mid y again so it runs through the middle this will create a line that looks like this right through the center and let's now declare the or draw the y-axis which will be 0 and 0 so it starts at the top left and it will go down to the bottom left so 0 again and then get height let's draw a line that looks like well it'll look like nothing at the minute because we're backed right into the border here so we're going to introduce a new variable a new constant called pad we'll set this to 25 this will basically push the if we set these variables here so pad here uh, get width minus pad pad here pad here and pad here and get height minus pad this will bring it'll bring everything out into the center like this so now that we've got this empty graph, we're going to want some samples to fill it with that will represent the visualised waveform. And we're going to get the samples from the oscillator class. So we'll create a new double array here called get sample waveform, which will take a integer as the parameter, which will be the number of samples. 
Now inside here, we're going to want to first declare a new double array, which will be the samples we'll be uh, returning. So a new double of the size, number of samples. And now, if you remember back to the wavetables, or the logic we used there, we used a fundamental frequency here. This um, uses the frequency that will generate a incomplete waveform that will fit the number of samples we specify. So we pass the size uh, constant here. So this frequency will generate a waveform that starts at approximately zero as the first value and finishes at approximately zero for the last index. So one complete waveform that fits the wavetable size. So we're going to want to use the same equation here. We'll do this by creating a double called frequency, which will be assigned to one. Oops. 1 divided by the number of samples divided by uh, cast to a double the synthesizer remastered the audio info, info dot sample rate the number of samples here is basically has the same usage as the wavetable size but instead of filling a wavetable we're filling the number of samples that the visualizer will use now go down into here and we'll create a index will be assigned to zero by default and a step size. If you remember how we traverse the wavetable using the get sample method for the audio, we have an index that we increment by a wavetable step size and clamp it to the wavetable size. We're going to use the same logic here, but first I want to move a few things around. I'll put this get sample method up here and the get sample waveform below here. Right, so using the uh, logic of the get sample method, get next sample method, we're going to want to increase the step size using the same equation as the apply tone offset here. So we'll cast to an integer, we're going to want the wavetable dot size, and we're going to want to multiply it by the, the adjusted frequency here. I'm actually going to create a function in utilities for that. So we'll create a new function in math, which will be uh, offset tone, public static double offset tone, which will take a base frequency and a, a frequency multiplier, which all it will do is return the base frequency times by math.pow2 to the frequency multiplier. Now we can go back in the oscillator class and replace these things here. So instead of key frequency dot all that we'll just put utils dot math dot offset tone the key frequency and the get tone offset. And we can remove the brackets here. Same logic in here. We'll do the wave table at size times by utils dot math dot offset tone the base frequency which will be the frequency declared and the get tone offset we don't have to create an apply tone offset method here because once we're generating a, a visualization we're never going to be able to change the frequency in real time so when we do change the frequency the tone offset parameters it'll actually update we'll actually redraw the wave viewer altogether so this will be called again so we can't change the tone offset inside the sample, we'll get the sample waveform method. Also, we also need to divide by the audio info dot sample rate. And finally in this method we're just going to index the wavetable for all the number of samples. So we'll create a new for loop, we'll loop through every every sample and we'll put samples of index i equals wavetable dot get samples of the index and we'll times that by the volume multiplier and then we'll set the index to the index plus step size modulo wavetable dot size and all we'll do is return the samples next we can head back to the wave viewer class and the paint component method and now we're actually going to call this uh, the new get sample waveform method for each oscillator that's passed to the wave viewer so to do this we're going to create a go up top and create a integer which is the number of samples and this will be the width 
get width minus pad times two. Because remember the width is the just the entire width of the control, whereas we want the width of the graph. So we have to minus the two bad the two pad values at the side of the graph here and here. Next we can create a double array, which will be the mixed samples, and set a new instance of a double array of the number of samples as the size. Make this a double array. And then we can fill this new array using a for loop for each oscillator in oscillators. We'll create a double array, a temporary one, called samples, which will be oscillator dot generate sample waveform or the number of samples and we'll use for in i equals zero i is smaller than samples dot length increment i and then mix samples of index i plus equals samples i divided by the oscillator array we have dot length this is because we have to mix the audio, just like we do in the Synthesizer Remastered class, where in the Buffer Supplier, we do the exact same thing here. Because if all we did was add the values of all the oscillators, then the waveform would be shooting right out of the top of the bounds. So it'll be, if every value, if we were creating a sine wave of the same frequency and volume, then when it reaches the top, the top will be 3, so way up here, instead of 1, which is the maximum value of this y-axis up here. So now that we've mixed the audio, we can go ahead and actually draw the waveform. So we'll create yet another for loop, which will loop over the number of samples and increase i every time. And we'll call graphics2d.drawline. Now each line is going to represent the, the line between two different amplitudes. So say the first index is 0 and the next, is, the next index is 0 0.1. We'll create a line from 0 to 0 0.1. So for the x-axis, we'll want pad plus i, because as we move through the for loop and the array, we want to move along the x-axis simultaneously. I'm going to want the y to be the, the sample value. Now the, the mixed samples here only contain values from minus 1 to 1, but the, the coordinates on any Java, JPanel, and controls of that like use integer coordinates. So we're going to have to use an equation that will convert a double floating point to a integer that will be represent a coordinate on the graph. So to do this, we're going to create a function. Now let's use the function interface for local functions because we're not going to use a function like this anywhere outside a paint component. So we'll use a function that will take in a double as the parameter and return an integer. And we'll use a, we'll call it sample to y coord and it's going to equal a lambda expression which is sample goes to the integer we don't need a braces like that so integer the mid y plus sample times by mid y minus pad all this does is it brings the sample value to the middle of the the y axis on the wave viewer and then times it by the the height of either the plus or the minus axis so how many samples are between them next we'll simply go down here we'll call sample to y coord dot apply the mix samples of the index i next we'll want the the next sample so the sample we're going to draw the line to simply put pad plus i plus one and for the y we'll want the the next y value of the next point but we can't just put mix samples i plus one because what about if the current index is the last index of the mixed samples array? So if we try and do i plus 1, it'll throw an array out of bounds exception. So to handle this, we'll create an integer called next y, which will be equal, we'll test if i equals number of samples minus 1, so if we're at the final index. And if it is, we'll put sample to y coord dot apply mixed samples i, so if it's the final sample, we'll just repeat the the previous or the current sample again. So we'll just draw a straight line over the x jump of one. Otherwise, sample dot y coord dot apply mix samples i plus one. 
and then we can use this value in the y2 parameter of the draw line method. And now we are done overriding the paint component method. So now we need to actually use this method. So we'll do this by creating a new method in Synthesizer Remastered. If we avoid, we'll just call it update wave viewer. And all it will do is wave viewer dot repaint, which will call the the this paint component method. And now in the oscillator, all the parameters that change what the sounds produced, we'll simply call synth dot update wave viewer, which we'll just copy and paste at the end of all these. This one, it's a single lambda expression, so we'll have to expand this like this and then paste it. So now once we start up the program, we should see a drawn waveform like so. And now let's try changing the parameters. As you can see, it's updating in real time. We change the waveform of one. You can see it's moving the, the square bits around change the volume of individual. You can see how if we have a square wave and two sine waves, reduce the volume and it completely removes the square wave. But we notice how it's a little bit robotic, how is in it looks like there's lag almost. This is because one on one waveform it's a little too small to update smoothly. But what we can do is go back to wave viewer or oscillator class sorry and multiply the frequency by three. This will display more waveforms, meaning the update patterns will be a lot smoother. And we can also see a general pattern when we change frequencies. Whereas with one waveform, see we couldn't see stuff like this where we can see the peak samples. Where the peak amplitudes of two of these waves differs from another one. Due to the change in frequency of one of the waves. And it does look a little not very smooth. So we can go back into Wave Viewer and use the render hint, call it here, Graphics 2D. Oops, do this below. I'll actually move this up a bit to here, where we can call Graphics2D.setRenderHint. And the key we'll want to get render hints dot key anti-aliasing. We'll just complete this hints.key anti-lasing and then rendering hints dot value anti-lasing on. Now once we start it, it looks a lot smoother. So now we can can have a little fun changing all the different waveforms and watch it updating in real life. Change waveforms to triangles, see how it all differs. And this will help us predict what type of sound will be produced by all the combinations. And it just acts as a nice little a visual accessory to the synthesizer to make it a little more interesting. This has been the final part of my remastered tutorial of creating a digital audio synthesizer. And by final, I mean that I plan to keep this series on hold, where if anyone suggests any features they want adding, and I deem that there'll be an interesting feature to add, then I will do a video in sort of an, a synthesizer remastered extras series. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in whatever series I make next.